The post aftermath of the data privacy fake news issues, I've seen a lot of startups try to position themselves as the antidote to the ills of Facebook and Twitter. What makes news picks different? Right, well, I think it's important to first look at the problem. So what is the issue behind all of this uproar around data privacy and things like that? And I think the biggest single issue is the black box algorithms that Google and Facebook and all the rest are using to control and distribute the news. Um, and so what we're doing is bringing that control back to the people, back to our users. So we have people, both our normal users and also our experts picking the news and everyone can follow each other and see what's being verified by our users, not just some algorithm that we don't know how it's coming to display what it does in our feed. So what makes you think you can survive when the tech giants are rapidly copying the inventions of startups? I thought Twitter's recent product rollout was pretty interesting in that it's taking a step towards more verification and curation and having experts' tweets appear next to breaking news. What's your take on that? Right, well, I think the fundamental issue for both the publishers and for the social media and the social network sites is they're, they're built to do things. So you see Twitter going into news, you see LinkedIn going into news, but that's not their bread and butter. The infrastructure of their entire company companies are built around being a social network. And for the publishers, they have the same issue. They're publishers. That's what they do. They make content. They're not great at galvanizing community. They're not great at creating that social aspect of it. But people need that in the age of social networks. So what we're doing is, because we started from the ground up, focused on creating both a community and a strong contents team, uh, we're able to combine the two that the bigger competitors are not uh, and build a business model on top of that that we think will last. And it's been proven uh, in our Japanese counterparts. But it's very hard to police the internet. And once any social media company reaches a certain size, they start to deal with trolls and toxicity. How are you planning to deal with that once when you get to that size? Right. So I think the fundamental thing that creates trolls is the ability to talk to each other on the internet. I think that's one of the biggest problems that a lot of the comment sites or the, the commentary sections of these major sites are dealing with is once you're able to talk to users, your focus goes away from the issue at the top and down to the other users. On uh, Newspix, you're only able to post your commentary once. Uh, you can leave your thoughts. You can't tag people. You can't reply to people. You can't do anything else. Um, and so if you're a user, you get to browse interesting perspectives but you can't start fights, you can't thread comments, and I think that protects us from a lot of the issues that you'll see on Twitter or Facebook, LinkedIn, Reddit, etc. Now, your parent company, Usabase, recently acquired Quartz. So what is that integration going to look like? One report said that Quartz would actually be running the U.S. business of news picks. I think um, you know there was a lot of media coverage of the acquisition earlier this week. It's important to focus on what our chairman, the founder of news picks, and the founder of Usabase is saying, which is, um, you know, the purpose of acquiring Quartz was to leverage their strengths to make the NewsPix platform in the U.S. stronger. Um, we are a business that is incredibly good at building communities and creating a platform. Quartz is a business that is incredibly good at specialized content, excellent journalism, um, and we're going to be bringing those two together, uh, hopefully, to create a mutually beneficial business for both. So Newspix was first launched in Japan where it has this paying subscription model. Are you exporting that model here or are you thinking about maybe an ad supported business? Uh, in Japan, they have both. Uh, so there is a high quality branded contents component. There is also a subscription revenue component. We believe you can't rely entirely on advertising, which is a mistake that a lot of the new digital media companies have made. Instead, you have to build a loyal subscription base. Um, so we'll be doing both in the same way that our Japanese counterparts succeeded. Now, Facebook insists that it's a technology platform company, company, that it's not a media company, but it does host a lot of content, it curates it, it seems to be a pretty fine line. Where do you stand on this? Where, where do I stand on Facebook's position as a media and a, and a content company? Versus being a technology platform versus being a media company. It, I think it depends on what your purpose is as a business. So if you're a technology company that is designing your business model around publishing, around media, and around content, that's, that's what you should be and that's what you should focus on. Facebook, um, you know, they, they've gone through lots of cycles. They've released plenty of products, new marketplaces, new things like that. Um, and the reality is they're trying to be too many things to too many people. And so they can say they're a media, media player because they have media on their website. But as we can see, it's not providing an optimal user experience for anyone looking to find their news um, and understand why it's relevant. Now, we all know that misinformation 
flows faster than real information on social media. So who is responsible for stopping that? Is it the government? Is it the platforms themselves? Is it the user community? I would say that the bigger issue is media literacy. So what's most important right now is for our media consumers across the country, and this isn't just happening in the US, to understand how to read uh, news and verify whether it's real or not on their own. That's a long-term solution. It takes a lot of government planning. It takes a lot of grassroots planning. In the interim, the tech companies need to do more uh, to control the spread of fake news on, the, on their websites. But unfortunately, when their business model is built on views, it's difficult for them to try to do anything that will stop more people. And fake news is attractive. People click on it. It's good for them.